What is up? Fellas, JPS Delivers here. Bad in NFL 2005. Seahawks at home against the Dallas Cowboys. Um, been kind of rough lately in this game. I know when the game was created, NFL, or uh, Madden NFL 2005. Also, weather, pristine, 63 degrees, feeling nice. Maybe if it was 10 degrees cooler, it'd be perfect for football weather. Fuck 20 degree weather, which we're already seeing across the NFL. And, uh, well, it's, I guess one of the teams that witnessed that's playing tonight on Thursday Night Football. Something else got sidetracked right there. But this game really, I mean, Ray Lewis on the cover. Pretty much when they made the game, they were saying they're going to get really defensive uh, focused um, just to see how they can change the game defensively. And that led to it being pretty damn hard to, to pretty much have a consistent offense. Mind you, it's the NFL. You don't have to have a consistent offense at all. But this Seahawks team has definitely taken a hit. I mean, I drafted Ricky Williams, and as you can tell, if you just can't run the ball in general, it doesn't matter if your guy's a stud. He's 94, 95 overall, and it seems like David Carr is having more success. Mind you, David Carr is really still not having that much success. We got shut out in the playoff game. We only lost, what, 8-0? to zero. There was like two field goals and a safety in that game. It's insane. Um, I feel like, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff factoring into it, even the sliders I play on and whatnot, um, but it is what it is. The Dallas Cowboys team is solid. They have probably the best duo of defensive linemen in this whole NFL uh, fantasy franchise of 2005. Uh, I think it was like Marcus Rucker, Darius Rucker, but um, and uh, Richard Seymour, who we know Richard Seymour. One of the absolute anchors of that sick Patriots defense, especially at this time, this Patriots defense is just ungodly. I mean, uh, just, Richard Seymour was a beast, and he was even a beast in Oakland and stuff like that. But um, they have him, Jeremy Shockey. Their wide receivers and running backs are lacking, especially the quarterback today. Cliff Kingsbury, is <laughs> he is uh, taking the start. He's taking the mound for the start. For this team, and um, kind of find out pretty soon as to why he was uh, out of the NFL pretty fast. And you know his stats in college were fucking just insane. I think uh, Baker's type of oh, also sweet touchdown pass to Steve Smith. That's a dude that honestly I've been targeting Andre Johnson a lot. It makes sense. Andre Johnson's a bigger, bigger target. Throw it down the field. Steve Smith, he's got the speed, so it's more so. I mean, think about it. The way Steve Smith game was, Steve Smith was doing this shit before Deshaun Jackson was. Um, you, I mean, I'm pretty sure. I mean, what? I mean, y'all, let me know what y'all's opinion is. Do you think Steve, Prime Steve Smith was just as fast, or if, uh, if not faster than Prime Deshaun Jackson? I know Deshaun Jackson has that reputation. I mean, just running deep post passes, guy. You know, maybe just a quick move, and that's all he needs. Great acceleration. We know Deshaun Jackson in his prime, one of the best deep threats, just, you know, simply because of his agility and, you know, his agility help with route running. And, I mean, for the most part, too. It's just all you have to do is make one big cut move when you're that athletic. You can rely on that athleticism. And you can beast and feast when you're running, like, nearly four threes like that. T great top speed as well. I mean, how? He, he ruined the New York Giants in the Meadowlands when he had that game-winning touchdown. Hell, before he even went to Cal, I witnessed him, because I grew up in San Antonio, I witnessed him at the All-American Bowl, which was the one on NBC, totally different than the uh, one uh, on ESPN. Again, the one on ESPN, obviously it's ESPN's recruiting and their rankings of recruiting for their top All-Americans to them. Which is weird, though, because I'm pretty sure it's like an AP poll for all Americans. That I mean, I'm pretty sure that um, I watched the first Deshaun Jackson type play. You know, it's one thing to see a huge touchdown by him, and it was going to be a touchdown. But it was not only that to see his skill, but also to see just the, the mockery of what could be Deshaun Jackson's thought process sometimes. And his, I mean, it, it, right? Sometimes, you know, being cocky is one thing. Or being confident is one thing, but I feel like cockiness leads to stupidity, considering you make mistakes when you get cocky. And Deshaun Jackson, 
First time I ever saw him. All American Bowl. Man scores a, I mean, on his way to the end zone, nine route or something like that. Or he had like a crossing catch, and it was a ton of yards after the catch. But he was going to the end zone. No one in front of him. No one probably without, within 15 yards of him. Dude just blasted by these. I mean, top recruit heading out. I mean, hell, he's on NCAA football 09 on the PlayStation 2. Um, and then... He, uh, you know, just like you saw with the, you know, the Philadelphia Eagles and Donovan McNabb, this is also going to be the biggest bullshit play I have ever seen on Madden NFL 2005. This is clearly not a catch. I mean, right? Dude's first fucking steps. I mean, the dude could be, I mean, the dude could be fucking boning the trainer on the side of, on the fucking sidelines at this point. Dude's so goddamn off. And then they give it to him. But um, Deshaun Jackson pretty much became infamous for, uh, you know, celebrating early right before crossing the goal line. That should have been intercepted. Before crossing the goal line, throws it back like he's finishing. With his arms, excuse me, with his arms back like that, flails it back to where he lets go of the ball early. And bam, it's considered a touchback at that point. We saw that against the Cowboys when him and Donovan McNabb hooked up on a huge, huge gain, I would say touchdown, but it was a huge gain because he fucked up again. Um, but uh, getting sidetracked again. But uh, Thursday night football, Green Bay Packers on the road against San Fran. San Fran looked way better without Jimmy G. I mean, Nick Mullins. You saw, you know, how limited that team looked with. C.J. Beathard at quarterback, what, two years ago or so. Um, so, you're, I mean, it's nice to see with a good team like that. And, I mean, an excellent offensive mind in Kyle Shanahan. There might be Shanahan's, or what was it, uh, Shanahan's going on tonight. Speaking of right there, missed field goal. So, they got the safety on that one. As I'm saying about the pass blocking and whatnot. But Steve Smith, great game so far. And uh, Todd Heap as well. But um, pretty much down to their backup. Their backup, though, I mean, I can't sit there and say that he's played better than Jimmy G. Um, but, I mean, you can make a really strong case that that's the case. Simply because Jimmy G's had, like, one good game. And really just... Besides that, not all too impressive whatsoever. Um, Jimmy G does not, not looking good, especially since the Super Bowl. And I know a lot of people are giving him shit after that. I think, um, the Packers, I mean, they should be favored. They're on the road, though. But, um, Packers have lost, well, just the one game. But they've lost two of their last three, losing the first one to the Bucks. Coming back against the Texans team that, you know, the Packers, it kind of seems like, um, maybe Jair... Uh, Jair Alexander, like he's getting to a point where he's getting, you know, considered to be shut shadow, shut down corner. Nice interception there, Adams. Um, but overall, this team just doesn't seem very physical. San Francisco is physical, so I think if anything, San Francisco could cover. Um, but I also, you know, Adam Jones is out, Jamal Williams is out. I mean, you should pretty much expect a heavy dose of of Devontae Adams. I don't care if he's facing good cover quarters. Like, I mean, it's Devontae Adams. He's going to be the... Him and D Hop are easily the most targeted wide receivers in football. You can make a case that either one of them is the best receiver in football. I mean, Devontae Adams, man. Uh, how many touchdowns does he have so far this season? Ten already? Right? Ten? Averaging, like, what? At that point, 1.25. To one and a fourth touchdowns per game? That's insane. That's insane pace. And what, when you think of that, the even, I mean, that's insane. But but not insane is that kick right there. That was a fucking shank. But that's insane in its own right. But when you think about it, though, um, when you're on pace like that, you know, you do 1.25 times 16. Say, you know, mind you, if they get all the way to 16 games played this whole season... He's on pace for 20 touchdowns. Randy Moss had 23 that one season. My God. 
Here we go, Steve Smith. Beautiful catch. Beautiful connection. I mean, when using David Carr, it's it's been nice in these video games. You know, back then, I mean, that's why he was the first overall pick. Up and comer they were looking at. You know, a guy that you could work well with. Um, it's just a shame, you know. Uh, people are like, oh, he sucked. It's behind a terrible offensive line. And he was thrown in the mix to be the first, you know, first overall pick for a brand new franchise. Good fucking luck. So, but the guy always had, like, an insane arm. Um, really, though, uh, it's just a shame that all that happened to where, uh, you know, just had to put up with that stuff. But, uh, hey, he paved the way for the Texans just to lose the Patriots in the uh, playoffs. And the Ravens, too. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. But um, Friday night, I do expect, I mean, Packers should win that game. Um, especially, I mean, one thing being said, this is terrible, terrible play by me on this, this fucking stupid, 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 stupid. I don't even know why I would run a play action pass. And then stupider, right there. So this game's starting to get a little juicy. Um, Thursday night, like I said, I think the Packers should win that game because, um, even though I'd have to say cover and stuff like that, Sean Taylor got fucking roasted on that route. And also, too, I checked that rookie on that team, that wide receiver who caught that touchdown. 99 speed already. So good fucking luck. I don't care if you're the fucking mastermind uh, free safety out of Miami, you know, who lived up to his fucking hype, Mr. Sean Taylor. Rest in peace, sir. Definitely my favorite defensive player growing up. Him and Marvin Harrison were my two favorite players. It's a shame Sean Taylor passed like that. Um... And uh, it was a shame to see Marvin Harrison could have caused the, uh, caused the passing of someone else. So, I don't know. But I think the Packers should win tonight. Um, just because, you know, at first glance, uh, Sam Fran really, like, it'd be the perfect situation for them to step up a little bit. Because, you know, this offense isn't at 100%. And that is the Packers offense I'm talking about. Packers defense could be easily ran on, so it wouldn't surprise me if um, Mr. Hasty or Mr. McKinnon get it done on the ground and you could see a trailing game to where um, Packers are trailing for most of the game. Um, but it's just a matter of injuries and, you know, lose your top player on defense. We've already seen that take a hit in certain areas to begin with. Um you know, Jimmy G, I'm not going to say it's a downgrade. Him being out, he just looked god-awful against what is, what, statistically the second to worst defense in football just because, you know, they coexist with the Dallas Cowboys. That's it. It's the only reason why they're not the worst defense in football. And um, injuries now to, you know, Debo, uh, Debo Samuel. Um, George Kittle, obviously, is probably going to be shut down the rest of the year. I would at least. So I think the Packers are going to win still. As always, fellas, take it easy. And BJ7's the boys against Penn State coming up.